The Vatican Bank is a mess, and it's been a horrible mess since at least the mid-1970s. And yes, there have been dead bodies in the wake of every single Vatican scandal. There's a deep infiltration. It was interesting. Just last week, Pope Francis, the current pope, he blamed wealthy people for putting their money in tax havens. The Vatican Bank is a tax haven for many, many wealthy people and has been because the Vatican Bank is an independent sovereign bank because Vatican City is its own sovereign nation. It's the smallest nation. It's about a two mile run. Whenever I'm in Rome, my son and I, we run around Vatican City. We run around a nation. I think it's just over two miles. It's tiny. But they have their own sovereign bank without oversight. Now, if you're a global thug, a bad billionaire, and you want to launder money, hide money, move money throughout channels in Europe or the world, wouldn't you want there to be somewhere out there a bank that has zero regulation and oversight? That's the Vatican Bank, and that's why thugs target the Vatican Bank and bribe officials so that they can have access to the Vatican Bank. Everybody knows this to be true. Now, as you know, the previous Pope, Pope Ben XVI, resigned in 2013, and there was a ton of scandal, particularly at the end of 2012. Why? Because his butler, Paolo Gabriele, was arrested by the Vatican. He was leaking documents from the Pope to the press. And that's what I'm going to go over today. But what makes this all even more interesting is that the Pope's butler, who was involved in this giant scandal, they call it the Vatileaks scandal, is dead. He died at age 54 from an undisclosed illness. You can go all over the internet. There's, this story is it's old. It's been out for several months now. You can go all over the internet and read this story, but it's always an undisclosed illness. We don't know how the man died. It's private, apparently. Now, here's what started going down. Y'all have heard of Archbishop Vigano, Archbishop Carlo Marie of Vigano. I do a ton of videos on him. Um, I, in a way, style myself as a scholar of Vigano. I think I've written, I've read everything he's he's written, and uh, I've spoken to him, and I think he's very heroic, and he's doing very good things and exposing things. And he actually in 2009, was appointed by Pope Benedict XVI to look into financial scandals in the Vatican. And he did uncover some problems. And I don't want to get into all the numbers and, and the details. I did all that in my book, Infiltration, if you want to read it there. Let it just be known that the in the tens of millions, Vigano uh, restored or consolidated, whatever you want to call it, he fixed some problems, and when he did so, he got into big trouble with other cardinals in the Vatican. Now, this was sort of the the, the clicking, the, the flipping of the first domino that led to many more problems. So Archbishop Vigano is also part of exposing Cardinal McCarrick and other corrupt cardinals in the United States a few years later. All this stuff is intertwined. It's, it's quite remarkable. But in January of 2012, okay, so this is a little bit after, around the time, actually, Archbishop Vigano is getting in trouble with other cardinals. The Vatileaks scandal spills out into the public, and it reveals financial corruption, things that Archbishop Vigano was discovering, international money laundering, and schemes of blackmail amongst higher-ups in the hierarchy, including cardinals, blackmailing each other over what seems to be reported homosexual practices and uh, male prostitution rings around the Vatican. Italian journalist Gianluigi Nuzzi published, the, published two letters of Archbishop Vigano describing corrupt practices that cost the Holy See millions of dollars. One leaked letter revealed a potential death threat against Pope 
Benedict XVI, who you can see pictured in this picture here. The man holding the umbrella for the Pope is the butler that we're talking about, Paolo Gabrielli. In May 2012, Newsy published a book entitled His Holiness, The Secret Papers of Benedict XVI, consisting of confidential letters and memos between Pope Benedict and his personal secretary. The book documented a subculture of Vatican jealousy, discord, and party infighting. Newsy revealed details of Pope Benedict XVI's personal finances and showed how bribery gained a special audience, allegedly, with Pope Benedict XVI. Insider info. People are saying, how are they getting the personal letters and correspondence of the Pope in the Vatican? Well, like any mystery, it's an insider, and it was the butler. The butler did it. Like on Clue, it was the butler. Vatican police arrested the Pope's butler, Paolo Gabrielli, on the 23rd of May, 2012. After confidential letters and documents addressed to the Pope and other Vatican officials were discovered inside his apartment. He was accused of being the mole that leaked all these documents to the press. Since the documents found in Gabriella's apartment matched the documents that had been leaked over the previous five months. This is the mole. One week, one week later, Pope Benedict public, publicly acknowledged the scandal. He said, quote, the events of recent days about the Curia and my collaborators have brought sadness in my heart. I want to renew my trust in and encouragement of my closest collaborators and all those who every day with loyalty and a spirit of sacrifice and in silence help me fulfill my ministry, end quote. Now they took the butler to court. And at his trial, Gabrielli pleaded guilty to stealing the papal documents but claimed he had done so in order to expose and fight the corruption within the church. So he stole them, but he was doing it for, a, for the greater glory, according to the butler. On the 6th of October, 2012, remember, Benedict XVI resigns in early 2013. So we're now at the end of 2012. In October, Gabrielli was found guilty of theft and received a sentence of eight years in prison which was then commuted to 18 months with fines. Now, this leads Benedict to commission three cardinals to do an investigation on the cardinals. He wants to know who's dirty, who's been paid for, who's bought, who's compromised, and who are these homosexual cardinals running gay prostitute guys in and out of the Vatican or at side parties or, as we learn later, cocaine-fueled gay orgies at the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. Sketchy stuff. Benedict's like, let's, let's find out. So he commissioned three men. Cardinal Julian Hernandez Casado, who was Opus Dei, Joseph Cardinal Tomko, and Salvatore Cardinal de Giorgi. Giorgi. And on September, I'm sorry, on December 17th, 2012, which, by the way, I believe is Pope Francis's birthday, Cardinal Borgoglio at that time, the three cardinals presented a three-ring binder that was red. Some sources I've heard say there were two binders. Some say it was one binder. It could have been a copy of the binder. Don't know. In this red binder were pictures, allegedly, of hierarchs, bishops, cardinals in drag, details about financial scandals, movement of money, all kinds of lewd info. And it is said that on this day is when Benedict said, I've had enough. I'm resigning the papacy. I'm abdicating. I'm leaving. This is for someone else. Now, I've also heard from some sources that are usually pretty credible, 
that at this time, Bennett XVI was told, don't worry if you resign, we'll get Cardinal Scola to replace you. He has the votes. He'll be the next pope. He can be Pope Benedict XVII and continue your legacy, but you're an old man. Well, guess what happened? That wasn't the plan at all. The plan was to get Bergoglio in there, and he became Pope Francis. That's what we've been talking about ever since 2013. <sighs> now, also... Um, on January 1st, 2013, the ATM machines in Vatican City stopped working. And that's because the Deutsche Bank had closed its accounts with the Vatican on December 31st, 2012. The Sistine Chapel could not process cash for ticket receipts to go into the Vatican museums. And Pope Benedict XVI announced that he would formally resign the papacy on February 11th, 2013. That night, by the way, is when lightning struck the Vatican. You remember that famous picture? The next morning, February 12th, guess what happened? A Swiss bank took over the cash machines and immediately everything started working again. So something happened that had something to do with banks and money and the butler and resigning and all of that. It is a great mystery. Some of it has been solved. If you want all the details, I go over it in my best-selling book, Infiltration. I know you may be tired of hearing about it, but a lot of people are still asking these questions and I'm like, look, it's in the book. Check it out. Infiltration. And then what this happened, the death of the butler happened after I put this book out. The butler died. The butler died. He was 54 years old. That's a young man. How'd he die? Well, I don't know. Nobody knows. It was an illness, but nobody knows. But I'll tell you, dead men tell no tales. That butler who died on, what day was it? It was late last year. Oh, let's see. It looks like November 23rd, 2020. It doesn't give the date of it, but that's the date. That's one day after this article. So we'll just say November 2020. He can tell no tales. He knew who set him up to get all those documents. And I'll tell you something. It wasn't just some journalist out there. The journalists profited from it. There were people inside the Vatican, inside the Pope's circle, who assisted him in this. Money was exchanged for this. He wasn't just sort of grabbing documents and faxing them to a journalist. This was a major sting operation and brought extreme embarrassment to Pope Ben the 16th. It literally broke down Pope Ben the 16th. It broke the man. This was a big deal. And he's dead at 54? Okay. Maybe it's natural causes. Maybe he has an illness that we never knew about. It's never been disclosed and the family doesn't want us to know, but it's sketchy. It's sketchy. He dies in 2020 after an enormous scandal in 2012 when people are asking questions, how did this infiltration happen? Who's a part of it? And it has something to do with banks and a lot of money. When you bring in banks and a lot of money, people always die, especially in the late 1970s when there's the, the Vatican bank scandal then. People were all over Europe that involved in that banks, Vatican bank scandal hanging from bridges and turning up dead. One, one mob guy involved in the Vatican Bank died in prison. How'd they get him in prison? Somehow someone snuck poison and put it in his morning coffee. All right, let's say a prayer. There's a lot going on. 
there's a lot going on. And the most important thing is not to spend too much time with your eyes on the horizon of this world with, a, with corruption in the church is to keep your eyes up at the heavenly reality, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Queen of Heaven, our Mother, Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, all the angels, all the saints, everything in heaven is pure. There's no sin. There's nothing lewd. There's no scandal. Everything is good and pure. And if we're going to be joyful, peaceful Christians, we have to keep our eyes up there. That's why I say pray the rosary every day. I say read the Bible every day. Man, if I just focused on this stuff, Vataliks, butlers, prostitution rings, bank scandals, I'd lose my faith. You have to keep anchored to the reality. And the reality is Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. All right, let's pray the prayer that he gave us, the Our Father, and we'll close out. In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, Sanctificetur, Nomen Tuum, Adveniat Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo et in Terra, Panum Nostrum, Quotidianum, Da Nobis Odiae, et Dimiti Nobis Debita Nostra, Sicut et Nos Dimitimus Debitoribus Nostris, et Ne Nos Inducas in Tentationem, Se Libera Nos Amalo. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Would you please do me a favor and like this video, but even more importantly, share this video on Facebook. Share it on YouTube. Share it on Twitter. Wherever you do your social media, take a moment, take three seconds, and share this video. I would appreciate it. And subscribe. Did you like this video? Good content? Good info? Rose your awareness of what's going on in the church? in Rome, in the Vatican, get more. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the little dingy bell. And when you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I go live. So subscribe, like, and then if you want, you can support at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall and support my work here on this podcast. I'll send you signed books, send you a signed copy of Infiltration. If you want to read that, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall and learn more. Pray the rosary every day, read the Bible every day, and remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Saints preserve us.